Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be talking about tourism hotspots. This is from the Leisure Sport and Tourism Unit for IBDP Geography. But if you're curious about Machu Picchu, you can continue watching this video. So yes, I'll be talking about Machu Picchu, which is in Peru, South America. Okay, so let's get started. So tourism hotspots are places that experience high levels of tourist arrivals. These places can also be called tourist honeypots. The term honeypot usually refers to a small area such as a village in a national park, while hotspots operate at a variety of scales from small villages to entire regions. So another word we should keep in mind is carrying capacity. So tourism carrying capacity is defined by the World Tourism Organization as the maximum number of people that may visit a tourist destination at the same time without causing destruction of the physical, economic, socio-cultural environment and an unacceptable decrease in the quality of visitors' satisfaction. So there's different types of carrying capacity, of course. So the first one I have here is social carrying capacity, which is the maximum number of individuals that a society can accommodate without causing significant social, cultural, or political strain. And the second one is ecological carrying capacity. So this means the maximum population size that not population size maximum you know individuals until like the deterioration of nature basically and physical carrying capacity so this is the maximum number of individuals that a given area or environment can physically support without degradation which is kind of similar to ecological carrying capacity and another an, another one we have is economic carrying capacity which i did not add so that's basically the maximum number of individuals or economic activities that an area can sustainably support without exceeding its resources or causing economic decline. So again, where is Machu Picchu? It's a site of ancient Inca ruins located about, about 50 miles or 80 kilometers northwest of Cusco, Peru in the Cordillera de, de Vilcabamba of Andes Mountains. I definitely said that wrong. Okay, so again with the carrying capacity with Machu Picchu, so the UNESCO sponsored sponsored this management plan for Machu Picchu called for no more than 917 visitors per day. So they put a quota on the number of visitors, essentially, and that's what they did since all these people were, you know, eroding the land of Machu Picchu, like the ancient site. Yeah. And again, to reiterate what I said, the site, Machu Picchu, the area itself, is being slowly eroded by tourists' feet. Um, Machu Picchu is located among steep slopes that are con constantly being eroded by heavy rains and landslides are common. So on top of that, there's like tourist feet. So no wonder they have to limit the people that go there. So in September 2023, Peru temporarily closed three area three areas excuse me three areas of Machu Picchu a UNESCO world heritage site built in the 15th century as a religious sanctuary for the Incas due to the site deterioration brought on by heavy visitor volumes so this is what it looks like it's really nice i would love to go there and you know to talk more about it about like its regulations so from june 2019 access to vulnerable monuments around or in machu picchu is strictly monitored and regulated and from 2020 the admission of the machu picchu is set at 2200 ish visitors per day according to the carrying capacity defined um to preserve the outstanding universal value which can be found online so the thing is, this is where, this is the site, excuse me, this is a site where, yeah, this is Peru, I'm, excuse me, I'm like stuttering all the time. So Machu Picchu is basically really, really close to the airport, as you can see there, and it's in the middle of the country, which makes it really accessible for people that just, you know, for people as in tourists, and it's close to a larger country, like a larger city, excuse me. And the Amazon River passes close by and fairly close to neighboring countries such as Brazil and Bolivia. So citizens from those countries or 
people who live in those countries, so basically citizens, can easily visit Machu Picchu if they wanted to. So let's talk about the benefits and costs of tourism in Machu Picchu. So let's begin with the economic costs and benefits. So the benefits are that it attracts high spending tourists from higher socioeconomic groups. So like HIC peoples, peoples, I meant peeps, HIC peeps keep coming to Machu Picchu and they buy all the goodies. Yeah, (laughs) sorry. Um, Another economic benefit, of course, it provides governments with extra tax revenues each year through accommodation and restaurant taxes, airport taxes, sales taxes, Inca Trail and Machu Picchu, Machu Picchu, excuse me, entrance fees, employee income tax and whatnot. And there's like also like a $20 entrance fee, right? That also goes to the government. And they say about $6 million dollars. Like, you know, Machu Picchu generates $6 million a year for Peru, while the Inca Trail, which is another tourist attraction, brings in another $3 million. So, and it also creates local jobs and business opportunities, which is also great. And if you're in economics, you would know that that's a multiplier effect and it brings new money into the economy. Okay, and the costs, of course inflates property values and price of goods employment tends to be seasonal tourist numbers can be adversely affected by events beyond the control of the destination leakage the money earned by tourism does not stay in the country but is used to pay for imports required by tourists the jobs provided are usually poorly paid so there's like poor income distribution this is starting to sound like economics um and yeah so let's look at the social benefits next So the social benefits are that, you know, it brings in cultural exchange. It provides cultural exchange between hosts and guests. And it also encourages the preservation and celebration of local festivals and cultural events. So people that are really keen on heritage tourism and historical tourism are really suited for this, I guess. And facilities and infrastructure supported by tourism can also benefit residents and encourages you know language learning that may be a bit too broad but yeah and social costs of course may attract visitors whose lifestyles and ideas con like conflict with the communities and may change individual behavior and family relationships because of that and there might be a it might lead to a loss of traditional values and culture through imitation of visitor behavior or cultural diffusion resulting from normal everyday interaction and crowding and congestion on the roads, footpaths, and whatnot. So a lot of things. Okay. And environmental benefits, there's not much. It's just like the idea of having this sustainable ecotourism idea but i'm not sure if that's probably probably not working as well but there's a thousand e- like environmental but be- like costs so like you know the site being eroded and the steep slopes eroded right and timber has been cut down to create the inca trail so deforestation and the influx of visitors has been kept under control to the extent that the only way of reaching the site was by railway but plans to build a road from Kuzo and a cable car running from the valley to the top of Machu Picchu could lead to harm being done and people hiking as well leave a lot of trash around which is not good and it's really unorganized as well because there's always I've read um articles about how there's like human waste around the trails that's disgusting and yeah oh and like basically noise pollution that's that's a social cost okay and so because of all these negative aspects these costs um they devised a the master plan the machu picchu reconceptualized plan So basically, this is the quote, this is a quote actually taken from the master plan. So you could read this, like, 
yeah, they just want to reduce the concentration of people in the area and kind of like disperse it around just to, you know, reduce, ease up the congestion on the hist- heritage space with the aid of interpretive signs and more efficient action actions by guides and whatnot. So yeah. Okay. So again, to reiterate, I, I don't think that was a good enough explanation. So it discusses So this is an approved master plan for Machu Picchu that includes a significant overhaul of its tourist infrastructure to address the issue of increasing visitor numbers. So the plan aims to disperse visitors, as I said before, control crowd flow and enhance the overall visitor experience by reconceptualizing the management model of this site. Okay, so here's some questions and some answers. So what are some of the key changes proposed in the master plan? So... One of the key change, changes are making different entryways and entry points. Although it sounds really simple, it's probably really, really effective in the long run since people are able to, you know, identify places where they can go to and they wouldn't get, like, stuck all the time, get lost. And second question is, how does the plan aim to enhance the visitor experience and ensure the preservation of Machu Picchu as a cultural heritage site? So the plan aims to enhance the visitor experience and preserve Machu Picchu as a cultural heritage site by dispersing visitors, as I said before, just basically reducing concentration of people. Like, just basically this whole entire strategy is like, let's not have a crowd. It's basically like that. So, and then last but not least, I have a little 10 marker. So, referring to one example, discuss the strategies that may be used to manage the carrying capacity of a popular tourist attraction in a rural area. Yes, Machu Picchu is located in a rural area. So, here are some strategies that I listed. So, visitor quotas. So, limiting people, which they actually did and you could write about. Peak off. Um, and peak pricing so when it's like peak I'm not sure what kind of uh, what time is like the peak for Machu Picchu but you know like places where you know where there's like be like like in Japan for example spring is like the most peak season for tourism because of cherry blossoms and like during the peak seasons they would increase prices and stuff so they can do that infrastructure upgrades again that's what they're doing increasing sides and signs and routes guided tours which is also what they're doing to you know enhance this like enhance like you know their overall experience at Machu Picchu as well trail management which is basically like infrastructure upgrades community involvement like co- like cleaning up trash and whatnot, transportation alternatives, visitor education, so teaching them about the basics of what they need to do before they go, and research and monitoring as well. Okay, so that's it. Thank you.